we begin by looking at India and this is the squad that's on your screens right now a very very strong top order Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma and Shikhar Dhawan they've pretty much set the world on fire and then a lot of very high quality players right throughout that lineup MS Dhoni of course 2011 World Cup winning captain and that bowling attack with the two wrist spinners who've made such an impact in the last couple of years and then when you just look at that uh, squad first look at that and you see that top three and you've got to say just on the basis of that this is going to be a team in serious contention I think the top three have uh, shown in the last two years how dominant their presence has been and their impact on winning matches for India uh, it, it, they have sheer you know dominance and the presence and the consistency I think that's been the hallmark you know all three of them have consistently performed and let's not forget uh, the uh, bowling attack as well. I think the bowling attack complements and makes sure that you know India restricts the opposition under a reasonable score for these top three to go out there and finish things off. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the batting outside of these top three. Does it concern you looking at it from the outside that there are several players in there? Vijay Shankar, the designated number four, has never played at number four. Just made his debut earlier this year. Dinesh Karthik has had a long career but not a hugely successful one, Kedar Jadav, iffy IPL, fitness issues, does the middle order worry you? Yeah, it is a bit of a concern, but I have always said that, uh, you know, someone like an MS Dhoni should be batting at four uh, and then you have either Vijay Shankar or Kedar, of course, if he is, uh, you know, fine, uh, then you have Hardik Pandya. So, I think with this, with these four batsmen, you should be able to, uh, you know, do damage irrespective of what the top three do, does uh, and, and then even the you know other players who are in the squad you know for example Dinesh Karthik, KL Rahul uh, whether he is just there as a backup opener is he there is will he bat at four mm. or will he bat at three I mean there's also a talk that Virat may bat at four so I think you know overall the squad I think you have the team management uh, has ensured that you have enough uh, you know uh, players there who you can look at who can take that responsibility in those kind of roles. Let's talk a little bit about the two wrist spinners because that was the one almost fundamental change India made since that Champions Trophy final loss in England where they introduced these two wrist spinners uh, replacing the finger spinners with them. Uh, are you concerned at all about players such as someone like a Kuldeep Yadav who, got, who had a little bit of trouble in the IPL lost his place in, the, uh, in, the, in his franchise team? Or no worries on that front? No, there's a little bit of a concern. I mean, you know, it certainly does affect a little bit. Uh, but knowing Kuldeep, uh, you know, he, he's, he's a strong character. He loves challenges. So that's something that I'm sure he will be able to, uh, uh, you know, leave behind. And so if he can get some confidence in the two warm up matches that India is playing before the start of the uh, World Cup, that will give him a lot of confidence. But both these wrist spinners. <coughs> have not only uh, you know uh, stifled the opposition but picked up wickets consistently i think on an average they pick up 5 wickets yeah uh, which is which is fantastic for a spin duo in 20 overs if any team picks up 5 wickets then you are you know probably 70 80% of the time winning matches also interested in your thoughts on the fast bowling uh, quite clearly jasprit bumrah is the standout he's been very good in the ipl as well Bhuvneshwar Kumar off late has gone a little bit cold in uh, one day cricket too, his numbers not great in recent months. Shami's come through but then there isn't a fourth uh, option available. Uh, just overall, how do you assess the fast bowling? Yeah, that's that could be a uh, you know, little concern that you don't have enough backup options. Uh, you know, I'm, I think Bhumra is number one in the world in all three formats. Uh, he's an exceptional bowler, he gets you wickets in the uh, power play and then comes and closes the innings off towards the end uh, and we all know how difficult he can be uh, to a batsman. Shami has grown in uh, stature, he has uh, worked really hard on his fitness, uh, he is consistently clocking more than 140, 145 kilometers per hour. That is really, uh, you know, a welcoming coming from uh, uh, Shami. The concern that I have is of uh, Bhuvneshwar Kumar because mm. he he is someone who looks like he's dropped a little bit of pace in this uh, IPL when he bowled uh, and not much swing, you know, it, it's not going to 
uh, I'm sure England will be different. He will certainly get more swing than what he got in the IPL. Yeah. But his pace has dropped a bit, so that's a bit of a concern. Uh, was it deliberate? Was it uh, something that he, uh, you know, there's there's an issue there. We don't know, but you know, I'm hoping that if India have to do really well, then it's important that Bhuvi gets back to his, uh, you know, 138, 139, sometimes 140. Uh, pace. One aspect of India's one day cricket that's come in for a little bit of commentary off late is that in this age of ultra aggressive one day cricket where the middle order uh, overs are also being counted for a lot, India sometimes tend to be a little bit conservative, especially when they are batting first. Uh, just again, thoughts on that area of their cricket. Do you believe they need to be a bit more expressive as a batting unit? Yeah, I think, you know, between the 30 and 42 overs, you know, that 12 over period is where they drop things off mm. and that's where someone like a Rohit Sharma you know becomes that much more critical for team India yeah. one of the openers and if that happens to be Rohit Sharma batting in that middle overs then we have never seen an issue but if India has lost three quick wickets or four wickets and then you have the middle order then that becomes a consolidation phase uh, they realize that I think the you know team is aware that that's an area that needs improvement uh, and, and this is a long tournament so you need to peak at the right time it's not just about getting the first couple of wins yeah. but consistent wins throughout the tournament get into a semi-final and then play the perfect game of the tournament so one final thought uh, Virat Kohli as captain this is going to be a big test for him this is a mega world event uh, do you believe that uh, one, that emotionally he uh, is in a much better place now, having had all the experience as captain. And then, of course, the counsel of a World Cup winning captain and Rohit Sharma as well, who's quite experienced. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, Virat will certainly be looking at uh, this World Cup as, since it's his first as, as a captain. Uh, he's grown in uh, stature, he's matured over the last couple of years that he's been captain. Uh, and, and he has the... Uh, a council of uh, MS Dhoni, uh, you know, who's behind the stumps, who's uh, who manages uh, resources, the spinners especially, <clears throat> and the field placements. So he has enough uh, experience to lean on to. Yeah. Uh, for example, MS is there behind the stumps. Then you have Rohit Sharma. So he has enough experience in the team. Right. So uh, semi-final, yes or no? Yes, I think India certainly has all the credentials to go uh, all the way but semi-fans for sure.